Ladies and gentlemen, good evening to all. Let me first thank Mr. Mark Dontright for inviting me for such a big conference. I want to talk about two issues. One is political issue in Afghanistan. The other is how true rural development we have changed the attitude of Afghan people. First, I want to elaborate the reason behind Afghan war. Everybody, we had a couple of discussions, very nice discussions about the corruption and about the proxy war. These are two terms which we can see very frankly in Afghanistan since many years. In my understanding, the Afghan issue has three dimensions or three aspects. One, national, the other, regional, and the third one, international. What is the national reason for Afghan conflict? The national reason is the drug war in Afghanistan. If you compare the opium production in 2002, it was 1,000 ton. But compared to 2015, it raised to 12,000 ton. It means that even the international communities existed in Afghanistan. A lot of opium production raised, and now the rate comes to 12,000 ton per year. So this was, you know, the corrupt government the problem of the corrupt government in Afghanistan, and also those warlords which are still strength and still they are powerful and still they are controlling our country. The second reason, which is the regional. The regional reason is the countries around Afghanistan, they are doing as we discussed before, we heard about the proxy war. They are doing their competitions in Afghanistan. They are doing the proxy war in Afghanistan. I can tell you the examples. See the competition between Russia and the United States in Afghanistan, the competition between Pakistan and India in Afghanistan, the competition between Iran and the state in Afghanistan, the competition between Russia and America in Afghanistan, the competition between China and uh, the state in Afghanistan. So the Afghan war is not a civil war in Afghanistan. The Afghan war is a competition between the superpowers. And the international aspects, you see the competition between Russia and the state, the competition between Iran and the state, and also the Arab world, and also the Middle East. You see, before our excellency, he explained about the, uh, Saudi Arabia and Iran competition, a proxy war in Yemen. Now, the same competition is going on in Afghanistan. So these three dimensions resulted the war in Afghanistan. So this is a long story if I can go in very details. Let me, what we have done so far, what the Afghan, uh, Afghanistan government has done so far, for their people in Afghanistan. 
In 2003, the international community held a conference in Tokyo in the pledge to support Afghanistan. But the condition was to ask Afghan government how you ensure the transparency, the transparency to spend all these money in a proper way. There was many different NGOs that they applied to get the contract, that they could spend the money in a transparent way. In the end, GTZ, the technical support from German agency, they got the contract and they started to plan a way that the communities can get some amount of money, about $60,000, to build their villages and to build the capacity of the villagers and also to uh, change the attitude of the village people. They started to make or to mobilize the people. I was working on that time in this program. We started working with the villagers to introduce them how to be familiar with the elections. We explained them that in such a way they can select the head of the community. It means we built the CDCs, Community Development councils. In every village, there was a community development council. They were responsible to prioritize and to identify the problem of the villages. Before, about 20 years before, in every village, there were commanders, and there were a khan, and there was also I influenced people who ruled the community, and they were not obeying the rule of the law. They were not obeying the government. They had their own, you know, strength and power in the villages. So this was a period of four months to go to every villages and preach for the camp and campaign for how to do elections. We did the election about that 34,000 communities, and we succeeded to identify a person as an elected person for the community to identify the prior and prioritize the projects for their own villages. So in this case, we had a community. One was the, the head of the community, the other, the second one was the deputy, the third one the cashier, and the fourth one was the secretary. So in every community we had built the capacity for five people within the community. If you calculate it for 40,000 people, it comes about 200,000 people that we built the capacity of those people within the village. That they were familiar with the type of elections, with the rules of elections, and also they changed, there was a change in their minds. So Afghanistan, you may know, there are about 70 person, people, illiterate. This is very difficult, even though we have some communities that within the whole community, you didn't, was able to find an illiterate person. The second we did, we prioritized the, the need of the people. Do this village need a school? Do this village need, uh, for example, road or clinic or anything else, or drinking water. 
So based on their need assessments, we were responsible to provide them with such an amount of money and give them this money to do the job themselves. When they came together, the third phase of you know, the third cycle of this process was mm, the Community Development Plan, CDP. They planned how to build their community, how to spend the money. We, I was responsible for the capacity building of this huge program, which is the first national program in Afghanistan in the second big program in the world. So we made conducting lots of training for the even unilliterate people, how they can purchase, how can they procure, how can they keep the records, how can they, you know, respond to the government, how can they make the links with the other agencies, how can they make the report in a way that we understood that they can, you know, build their capacity in such a way. The fourth mm, cycle was the implementation of the project. Those were able, those people were able to build the project themselves. Even they were not built in a good quality, but we tried to encourage them to do their best for building their villages. In the last uh, cycle, it was, you know, the, 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 the maintenance and operation of the projects. They were, for example, responsible to look after all those projects that they built themselves. And last 40 years of war in Afghanistan, most of the oppositions troop or group, they destroyed the inf infrastructure of Afghanistan. They destroyed bridge, they destroyed roads, they destroyed you know, the schools, they destroyed all the projects. We gave them the sense that all these projects is your projects, your contribution is much important to the projects. By this way, they were uh, ready to contribute 10% of their own to the projects by providing tools for the project, by keeping the tools to their warehouses, by providing labors to the projects. So in this case, we encouraged the people to support the National Solidarity Program. And we applied and completed about 40,000 small projects. This is too much for a country like Afghanistan to be completed by the, uh, by the people. In this situation, it means that we almost changed the attitude of the people. The people who were fighting against the government, now they are aside with the government and they are doing their own project. This was a success story of Afghanistan. But the problem in Afghanistan is this proxy war. I'm sure there are some Afghan colleagues sitting here. I think they are agree with me that in Afghanistan, this is not a civil war in Afghanistan. This is a proxy war between the superpowers. You see, the, now, the difference terrorist group which they raised, especially in this 10, 20 years, you know, they have their own idea, difference idea. It's called Jihadi Islam or Islam Jihadist. This is not what we think this is raised in Afghanistan. This is growth in Afghanistan. Afghanistan, especially Afghan people, is a victim of this jihadist group.
We are in the front line. If the international community does not support us, if we lose, if we fail, it means the whole world will fail. So now you can see the proxy war between the superpowers. This is, the matter is not Afghanistan. The matter is the proxy war. I mean, if you, Mr. President, he explained a little bit about this Ukraine, about the East European country, you see. Nowadays, the confrontation between the, Soviet, uh, the Russia and the NATO is the Ukraine. The plastic missile of the NATO is deployed in Romania and I think Poland toward Russia. And also the Russians, they have deployed their plastic missile toward European countries. You see the relation between Russia and Taliban. This is why the other terrorist group, which is Daesh and Al-Qaeda, they are struggling to enter the Middle East, the Central uh, Asia's country. So somehow they made their own alliance. And the, you know, the ground for this proxy war is Afghanistan. We are suffering. Also, we have a corrupted government in Afghanistan. Uh, unprofessional people in their leadership of Afghanistan, which they failed the government of Afghanistan during this 15, 16 years. So now, I mean, we are suffering from international community. They are not supporting Afghans honestly. If they were supporting Afghans honestly, and we had, you know, last time we had the election, the presidential election. But finally, John Kerry came to Afghanistan, he, and he suggested a unity government between two parties. There are parties which they directly related to those fundamentalist groups. Still, they exist, still they are in power. If the international community wants to bring the democracy, human rights, and women rights to Afghanistan, they have to support those educated, those honest, those transparent people to lead the government. So I think uh, this is the uh, very, you know, uh, you are exhausted listening a lot of mm, the lectures and discussions. I come to the end and thank you for listening. And if you have any question, I'm here standing to answer you. You can stay. You can stay. Oh. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Isaac, for you speaking about your experience also in Afghanistan. The problem of the war in Afghanistan. Uh, we see the intervention of the different power, regional powers, and also the, the big problem that uh, every time we are looking, we are watching on TV about the opium. Uh, uh, I think, uh, as he said, uh, we need in Afghanistan the help of international com community, but in a frankly way, uh, how they can help to solve the problem of Afghanistan. And also, I remember, uh, I think it's a few months ago, President Karzai was talking about that the the problem of Afghanistan must be solved by Afghanistan, people of Afghanistan. 
But uh, even we need the, the help of the international community, but we must to work at national level to solve uh, some problems. And uh, I remember he talked about the, like the, the uh, commission of the, the old, oldest men uh, with the different community that can help to understand the problem of Afghanistan and how to solve those problems. So thank you again. Uh, please, if you have questions, you can. Uh, Mr. Isaac is here. Yes, please. I think the, the goal is to reach to the peace in Afghanistan. Finally, we have to follow the rule of cultural diplomacy among Afghans. As I told you, 70% of Afghan people are illiterate. So it needs time to get all those people to be literate and to change. As long as we do not change the attitude of the people, we cannot move forward. It needs long time, but it needs the support of international community and support of those NGOs who are working in Afghanistan to look after this goal. Otherwise, if every country or every NGO or every institution look after their own benefit and interest, it will not happen. But finally, we have to get out of this problem. Thank you. More questions? Yes. Yes. You see, uh, we encourage the international community to support Afghans. Without supporting international community, we cannot live even one day. It is not possible. But we request the international community to not look after their own interests in Afghanistan. They have to support Afghans people, I mean, to not to support the government, not, I mean, su not to support the corrupt government, try to bring transparency in election, trans to bring those uh, democratic rules in Afghanistan, try to bring the rule of law in our country. This is what we want from the international community. <coughs> More question? So thank you again for your participation. Thank uh, you thank for you. listening. Thanks a lot.